welcoming us into this beautiful facility right here along this magnificent riverfront. Uh, we couldn't do this fight card without you. So for everybody at Visit Beloit, let's give them a nice round of applause, please. Like we said at the beginning of the fight, we're fighting tonight on an international stage. We've got a group of seasoned athletes who are very long ways from home. They travel all over the world. They're probably one of the toughest teams in kickboxing today. In fact, they just returned from Bosnia after taking home countless medals. So ladies and gentlemen, as they make their way to the ring, uh, I want to give them a nice American salute. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Team Poland. Can we get on our feet, please? Come on, make them feel welcome. They're a long way from home, a long way from their families, a long way from everything they know. So we want to make sure while they're in this country, they feel the warmth of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Poland. Escorting the next team to the ring is the U.S. Army 826 Ordnance Company Color Guard escorting Team USA! Come on, Beloit, it's too quiet in here. It's Veterans Day weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Team USA! Ladies and gentlemen, got pretty crowded in here pretty quick. But we're going to introduce you, we're going to introduce the fighters one at a time. Those people who are going to be facing each other. We'll start with Piat Stapen and Romeo Orozco. David Kaspersky and Seth Swinehart. Elias Jankowski and Kutzlong Kutzlong. <laughs> Michael Bosjebis and Chris Hicks. Magdalena Rock and Amanda Ginsky. Ladies and gentlemen, all of the coaches from Team USA and Team Poland, give them a nice round of applause. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to ask that you rise as we play back-to-back -back national anthems. 
We'll begin with the national anthem from Poland, followed by the singing of our national anthem as performed by Mr. Tom Hinegar. We ask for nothing but respect and quiet. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is cold and flu season, and I have not escaped it. So we're going to have to do this together. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and the bright stars through the perilous fight, for oh, the ramparts we watched were so
ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tom Heaney. A big thank you to the U.S. Army, and he's a service company, 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 and he's a service company. We'd like to welcome the Polish Chief of Delegation to speak. Welcome to want the United States of America versus Poland kickboxing match. I would, I would like to give special thanks to uh, Brad for organizing uh, this match. Bravo! This match is very for us because uh, this is the year we are celebrating the first uh, anniversary of the Polish Kickboxing Association and uh, 30 years ago Polish fighter Marek Piotrowski won the first professional belt in the United States. And uh, we are very happy to be here. Uh, thank you for Jako uh, USA for inviting us. Thank you Rob Spitsky for inviting us. I think uh, American national team uh, come to Poland next year and uh, we will do rematch. And uh, last information, not a very good. Last October, pass away Thomas Krzyczek, Polish great fighter and uh, national Polish team coach, K1. Uh, Please stand up for the silence. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to recognize a moment of silence. As you just mentioned, uh, they recently lost their head coach. So we'd like you to just bow your head to a moment of silence, please. Thank you. And just remember that. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Welcome to the United States. You guys, we're going to let you go back and get ready to fight. We got a busy night ahead of you. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Poland, Team USA, it's party time. Let's go. Ready to kick off the USA vs. Poland card here at the Eclipse Event Center in Beloit, Wisconsin. Fantastic undercard, and now we're ready to watch five of Uf USA's best against five of Poland's best. I'm Matt Lucasio along with Mike Finch. Just a great night of combat sports action here tonight with the Waco national team and the national team from Poland. So Romeo Roscoe in the blue, Team USA trunks, red trunks for Peter Stepien. Oh, you don't even need the trunks. Look at that uh, bald eagle tattoo with the American <laughs> flag cape. <laughs> I like it. Fantastic. Mike, we've seen Romeo Roscoe uh, about four, a little over four years ago. He, we saw him in his MMA debut. He needed just 39 seconds that night to knock out his opponent. He's a Pan American gold medalist, two-time national champion. Last year he fought the number one ranked 125 pound Brazilian kickboxer. He had over 20 pro fights. That fight was in the Pan Am gold medal match. And before the fight, Mike, he got the famous Uwe by Morer treatment from the Brazilian fans. The English translation being, you're gonna die. Well, Orozco had something to say about that. He ended up capturing the gold medal after dropping his opponent several times in that fight. So he is a game opponent. He did take his first loss, but he said, I've been fighting my whole life. I won't let one loss decide my fate. I'll be back stronger than ever and hungry for the next fight. That night is tonight for Romeo Orozco. Yeah, no question. He's got a big spotlight on him tonight. Lots of glory on the line here. 
representing his country, which is obviously he's all about with that awesome American flag tattoo on his shoulder there. And, and here he is representing the United States of America against Poland. Yeah, representing the United States and also Z's martial arts. It said Coach Rob Zbilski, and he just said, Rob is so smart. His understanding of the fight game, I feel like no one understands kickboxing like he does, working different angles, different shots, and different movements. That was in a quote from uh, an interview he had done with Fight Book MMA. Orozco doing really well with his offense here, really picking up some timing. I like how he's stepping away. The low kicks he's eaten, though, has really had an effect on him. Great spinning back fist he set up there. Nothing landing perfectly clean in that combination, but I like his activity. There's that low kick again. You see how that turns him, and he returns fire and really knocks his opponent off balance. Got stepping up against the ropes there. Left hook rocked him. The referee pulls Orozco off. Is he going to call that a slip? Oh, wow. wow. That, that, that left hook looked like a knockdown to me, Matt. Orozco continuing to be aggressive here against Stepin. That now left hook is money. They're saying, go, go, Romeo. And that's exactly what he should do. And Let those hands fly. Doing, yeah. Beautiful round. Yeah, that's the end of round one. And I think Peter Stepin is a little bit surprised at the fireball that came up across the ring from him named Romeo Orozco who just did not stop with the pressure in round one. Absolutely. He would do anything he could to slow Romeo down. But Karate Kid is letting everything fly and most effectively his hands. He's doing a great job putting multiple punches together. Find some, found some really good left hooks towards the end of the first round there. You see him banging this left hook, trying to throw that knee up the middle, throwing that left hook again. From that angle, didn't look as much of a knockdown. Watching it live though, definitely saw the, definitely looked like the left hook is what put him down. Going with the overhand here, trying to put some pressure in. Just trying to find that left hook. There it is again. Yeah, I don't know. I That's mean, a tough call, right? He, he's overwhelming him with shots. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's pressed his opponent, uh, stepping up against the ropes. Uh, that looks like a 10 count to me. Yeah. I, I could see also not giving the 10 count. Well, it seemed like the hook made that left leg pop out and go down. So right, exactly. I think you could call it either way. And he's the one who pinned his opponent up against True. the ropes. He's the one who's doing it with punches. It wasn't that his opponent was off balance. It's that his opponent was getting smacked up. <laughs> Oh, wow. I, I was like, what is he signaling? And I looked at his right shin, and it was pretty obvious. Wow. Oh. Orozco's courting him for uh, corner, calling for him to be first, hands first. His hands are working. He said, keep throwing your hands. No question about that. And they're calling go, go, go after the missed kick. Nice takedown to a full mount. It is not at the XFO anymore, though. This is <laughs> the World Association of Kickboxing. I got slightly confused there for a moment as if I were back in an MMA fight. Nevertheless, back to their feet with a minute 30 left in round two. He's doing a good job moving. Landing some shots now. He's landing some shots and his body language is outstanding. He looks like he is just ready to pounce. Steppy and starting to find a home here with this right low kick. It's been finding home, but he just started to double up on him now, throw him more often, and now he's on his butt. Step it hurt. He made a weird grimace there. I don't know if it's that right shin guard is still bothering him. Is it on correctly? Stepin is all about these low kicks. There's no question that is his most effective technique in this fight. Well, now he's slipping on the strap at the bottom of his shin guards. I'm not sure that shin guard is on correctly. Another non score takedown for Romeo. He's trying to plant that right foot to get that shin guard on correctly. He does not, it's not comfortable for him. And neither is the one for apparently Romeo Orozco. So interesting having to deal with some equipment that's not fitting right. I would figure the most annoying would be a headgear. That's sure. not on properly, and you keep having to adjust it. And sure, a little Vaseline in the eye. There's all types of stuff <laughs> that could go wrong, Matt. <laughs> and again, interesting with the scoring. 
that no matter how many punches you land, if they're not clean and if they're not on balance strikes, they do not count. That was a wild yeah. round. I mean, just wild. But Romeo Orozco still the one leading this dance here. We're, we're not scoring it, so it's not round by round scoring either. Yeah, it's not so. traditional round scoring. It really doesn't matter in so much as how many total rounds you get, but rather how many total strikes you get accumulated as per the judges and what they think are significant and effective clean strikes. Nevertheless, it seems to me that if you're looking at a fist fight here, I think Romeo Roscoe is the one leading the dance. I would agree. I, I do see the low kicks adding up, and uh, and and Piotr Stepin, his low kicks have been his weapon. He needs to focus on ending his combinations with those. No matter what happens with the punching, it looks like that low kick is always there for Stepin, and that he should continue to blast that because that's where he's found success in this fight. That's where he's outstanding. Is he's finishing off these combinations and uh, finishing off these little skirmishes with that low kick. Piotr right away. Jeez, that, that shin guard does not want to stay on his right leg. No. I say just ditch them both, both sets. <laughs> it's very easy for me to say. These guys are tough. I don't think they'd be opposed. <laughs> Probably not. There's, there's that low kick was very clean there. Look at that, gets countered hard! Big time counter there for Romeo Orozco. You saw stepping through that left hook and got a knuckle sandwich to the jaw. Man, Orozco now just overpowering Stepin. Yeah, he, he's overwhelming him. And he's just more clean with the striking. Look at him land that right hand right down the pipe. And I, you know, I don't want to sit here and talk about wardrobe malfunctions like, but but Stepin's eyes, I don't know if he has sweat in him or if his headgear is bothering, but Great he keeps rubbing his Stephen. eyes. Now, just, now Stepin's finally coming alive a little bit. I see what you're saying. Yeah, his eyes keep you know blinking and squinting, and he keeps uh, adjusting his headgear. <laughs> Nevertheless, he's got one minute left in this round to do some work against Romeo Orozco if he'd like to leave the States with a victory. Romeo Orozco needs to keep what, what has been working for him. I like the right hand Quit by Orozco, but, but it pretty... <laughs> Stepin took that right hand very well. Uh, the number one thing Romeo Orozco could do to take this fight over is check that low kick. He keeps getting hit with the same technique over and over again. He needs to pick his left foot up, angle his left knee at the angle that the kick is coming in, and check it. If he addressed that low kick, he would be dominating this, this contest. Very animated referee with a 10 second call in there. A very animated fight. Yeah, absolutely. So that was a fun fight between Romeo Orozco and Peter Stepin from Poland. We'll see if Orozco scores his eighth victory. Man, that's gonna be a tough fight to call, Mike. Yeah, it is. I, I, I really liked the technique of Piotr Stepin. Yes. I really liked how he threw the low kicks, he kept the shell up, but every time Piotr would let his hands go, he was getting smacked. His boxing was not as good as Romeo Orozco's. Every time he threw that left hook, Romeo Orozco was coming over the top with a right hand. Romeo was able to beat him to the punch and finish with the punches. The difference really was were the low kicks, and Piotr Stepin yeah. landed a lot of them every round. I don't know how they're going to score this one, well, but the audience took a W for that fight. What a great contest. Yeah, absolutely, and they, they say that because of the visibility factor that the low kicks are the easiest to score, so those will be scored the most, whereas opposed to some punches, you can't really see if they're rolling off a shoulder, if they're connecting cleanly. So we were talking with Rob Zabilski earlier, and he said low kicks are the easiest to get points with because they are so visibly uh, noticeable, and they're you know usually the cleaner strikes than going upstairs. But anyway, we'll see. It was a fun fight, and we'll see who gets the victory here. Referee calls him to the center of the cage. The announcer is back with the decision. Let's throw it to him and see who is the winner. Will it be Poland's Pierre Stepin or the USA's Romeo Orozco?
of these athletes fighting on an international stage here at the Eclipse Center in Malloy. All three judges scoring this fight the same. Your winner, by unanimous decision, fighting out of the blue corner, Romeo Karate Kid Orozco. Orozco. Out of the night between USA and Poland. Seth Swinehart getting his final instructions from the referee. Getting the gloves on. He'll be fighting David Kaspersky from Poland. And Kaspersky won gold back in 2013 and silver at the WACO Championships in the same year. He is a 14-time, Mike, Polish Muay Thai national champion. He's also won a Polish K1 title. In 2014, he was named Fight Sport Polish Kickboxer of the Year, and he fought at Glory 53. Now, Seth Swinehart does not have a resume as accomplished as Kaspersky, but since both of us have called a bunch of his MMA fights, we could tell people that he definitely has an indomitable spirit and an excellent skill set, both of which are going to be put to the test tonight against Kaspersky. Swinehart's 3-1 and one in MMA. And tonight, he tests out his kickboxing skills against one of the world's best. Ripping shots to the body right away and a lot of pressure. He's walking Kaspersky down. Kaspersky his corner really is asking him, him to let estate. his hands go. Yeah, Kaspersky's letting him have a little bit of real estate there, moving out of the way, nothing landing too clean. Good defense so far from, from Baxter. Seth took a loss in the XFO a couple years ago, was his first MMA loss. He said after that, he kind of reinvented everything, got back to kickboxing, wrestling, boxing, just trying to retune all his skills. Like a lot of fighters, he said the loss was the best thing that could have happened to him at the time. Took him to a whole new level, he said. And we always know his game. He took this fight on incredibly short notice fully knowing who he was going up against. So. Yeah, 48 <laughs> hours. Took it on 48 <laughs> hours notice. That's a man right there. It says, sure, I'll fight the 14-time Polish Muay Thai champion on 48 hours. Get, where's my mouthpiece? Oh, what a dude. Oh, and that knee that up the middle him. got him. That dropped him. That is going to be... That's that unconditioned body. You know, if you're not training consistently, your body's going to be not up for that type of punishment. Make sure Seth is okay. He is. He took the full allotment of time to heal from that knee to the sternum. And you see him really gingerly trying to block that now. He's lost a lot of speed and pop, did Swinehart. Yeah, he keeps walking forward, but he's paying the price for it, Mike. He says that was on the cup. I don't know. The referee did not jump in right away. But Kaspersky yeah. let his hands down and Ooh. let him recover real quick. Swinehart still on the case. Made it through that first frame. Listen, the first 30 seconds were Swinehart, but uh, as time went on, Kapersky started to take the fight over, land with his lower body. He was landing the knees, the kicks. That was the real difference in that round. Yeah. Bit of a speed difference, of course. Swath being aggressive, taking all comers. I mean, right there, he gives him a little taunt, like, let's go, like that all it. you got. Let's yeah. go. And kept walking forward, walking forward, but sometimes I think that was to his detriment. He ate some shots. Continually moving forward, maybe a little lateral. Well, something that Kapersky is not capitalizing on is, is, is being unknown or catching him with a shot he didn't see coming. Kapersky's pretty much loading up on what he's throwing. He's just throwing hard. 
as he did with that knee that dropped Swinehart at about 41 seconds left of round number one. A lot of single shots and whatnot from Kaspersky. All right, Seth's got a round under his belt. Let's see if he can mount a little bit more offense here in round two against David Kaspersky. He's certainly going for it. Swinehart trying to work to the body. Smart. Yeah, he's starting to the body, and if he starts finishing to the head, he might be able to find a home for one of these powerful hooks. Very powerful puncher is Swinehart. Yeah. He's fought at 230. He's fought at 205. He's made his way down to about 185. He said that's where he would like to continue his career, whether it be kickboxing or MMA. Referee break, quick instruction. Swinehart's corner saying the word headhunt. I'm not sure if they're asking him to headhunt because he's been going to the body a lot. There's a good right hand for Swinehart, but Kaspersky just continually oh. punishing his legs and his yeah, body. He, he left that at the nice right hand though, Mike. He didn't follow it up with anything. They are really accumulating here. Yeah, These he's, strikes he's, have yeah. brought the hands down. Well, this is where when you take a fight on short notice and your other your opponent's so active, it's just tough to stay up with the pace. The Polish fans loving it. Good right hand to the yeah. body there for Swinehart. Ooh. Another one to the body. What a powerful human being Kaspersky is. Yeah. Jeez. Moving all over now, working the legs, the midsection, and the head. He's throwing these knees and kicks like he's hitting a pad. Yeah, he really is. 22 seconds left in round Swinehart number two. Continuing Wild at the pressure. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. He's making this fight happen in a phone booth. There's a big right hand by Seth. They're telling There's him to a go. Right Time is short. They're asking him to go. They're asking for Seth to let it loose. Seth says, let's box. Kaspersky says, nah, we're going to kickbox. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all, all Seth wants him to do is just. Have a, have a slug fest, you know. It, it's best for Swinehart if they just plant their feet and throw sure. punches like Leonard Garcia or Bandele Silva. But uh, what, what Kaspersky wants to do is stay disciplined. Keep it, keep it, keep it uh, technical and keep the knees and kicks coming. Yeah, Kas Kaspersky's probably seen through two rounds that technically speaking, he's gonna be able to be first and land with accuracy, so he's no need to get into a dogfight. Something I like that Swinehart started to find in that round was that right hand to yes. the head. He split the guard of Kaspersky a, few times. a couple of times yeah. during that round. And that right hand, as we just saw right there in the replay, has been there for him. That's something to watch out for in this third and final round. You got Shane Adams in his ear right now talking to him. And there, of course, is David Kaspersky getting his last instructions before the third and final round here at Waco, USA versus Poland. Swinehart with the quick start, the right hand. Well, geez, the referee started them standing right in front of each other. It's always strange, I find, when they do that. Yeah, Go that put them in their odd. corner and let them figure out how close the range is going to be. Yeah. Good slip there. Yeah, Marcus very nice slip. Got underneath that cross. Saw coming a long ways away. And maybe his corner talked about that because we did see him get tagged with a couple crosses in that second round there. Seth is so close. He's going to go down for one. Seth is so close that he actually takes a lot of power off of these kicks. So Seth will take the count. Yeah, he preferred to take the count to be able to recover. And we'll see if Kaspersky could get him out of here. So quick with that left leg, anywhere he wants to put it. Look at that clinch, he had that plum, and Seth couldn't do much with it. Oh! I like how he just snuck over the top of the right hand there with that high kick, that was pretty. Work by Kaspersky. And he's just owning this lead leg, continually coming up to the body. Swinehart trying to find a home run shot, but fatigued and damaged. Yeah. 
just 20 seconds left. What a feather it would be in, in Swinehart's ca uh, cap just to make it through these three rounds on 48 hours notice against the Polish champion. Yeah, multiple champion. What a fight. Yeah, I think if we were to talk to Seth afterwards, I think his only disappointment would be that he wasn't able to get enough offense going yeah. and get his best shots out there. But, I mean, I think he fought, especially considering all the circumstances, I think he did a great job. He really, you could see towards the later rounds, he was getting a little bit more rhythmic. Yes. But, um, you know, 14-time Muay Thai champion, just a little bit too much for him tonight, I think. That's for sure. And you know what? It was the lower body techniques that really accumulated. Yes. It he was the knees. a lot. It was the kicks. It was the consistency. The low kicks, inside low kicks. He had those all fight long, and he repeatedly scored with those. He took every opening he could and capitalized on it. I mean, Kaspersky is a very smart fighter. Um, off those breaks with the referees, he was always seemed to be first, always looking to score. You can see why he's such a high-level fighter. And just congrats to Seth Whitehart for saving a bout for a guy who's traveling all the way across the world. I mean, that's fantastic that he was able to let David fight and get in there himself. And uh, they're tallying up the cards. So let's see how they have it. Will it be Swinehart or Kaspersky? On here, USA versus Poland from the Eclipse Event Center in Beloit, Wisconsin. Elias Jankowski and Kuchlong Kuchlong for America. And we are underway, red trunks for Elias Jankowski, the purple trunks for Kuchlong Kuchlong, the Sudanese samurai. 33 years old, 5'10", 156 pounds. Asked him what his favorite fighter was, he said Samart Payakurun, who was not only a Muay Thai champion, but back in the 80s, he was the WBC boxing super bantamweight champ. I like it's how good Kuchlong is stalking Zankowski yeah. right now. There's some of those clean kicks that score. Team Poland's been using those all night long. Kuchlong's corner, tell him we gotta go. Once again, we got a brief uh, shin guard slip. Oop. Kuchlong likes that right hook followed by the left kick. He keeps going back to it. Kuchlong lands a left hand. Nice plum and a knee up the middle for him. Yeah, lots of control with that plum. 
Good straight left down the pipe. Nothing on it, though. But well-timed and well-landed. Big kick by Coach Look at Long. how he gets him blocked. off wow. balance. Wow, my goodness. He's really moving him around with that with that clinch. And Referee giving him a little chat about that. Right. Well, you, you're only allowed to hold it for one strike, but he's making it a good one. <laughs> Beautiful check there. And a straight right from Poland. Ten seconds. These are quick rounds. Yeah, I feel like they're they're just getting to know each other. Yeah. Well, we'll see more of it in rounds two and three as Kuchlong lets his left go a bunch of times before the bell. Not not a bad thing. A lot no. of those were not landing clean, so I don't believe they're going to be scored. But he's staying active and he's definitely keeping his opponent at bay. Yeah, we got ourselves a fight here. And Cooch Long and I might be going out later because he says after a big fight, he likes to eat pizza. <laughs> Me too. Sounds like my kind of dude. That's right. Me he too. Speaks three languages, Mike. He speaks Japanese, really? Dinka, and English. Wow. Impressive. Dinka, of course, from his native Sudan. Not sure where he can learn Japanese. That's also very impressive. Learned three very different languages. All right, round two now between Kuchlong in the purple and Jankowski in the red for Team Poland. Two of the bigger fighters on the card tonight. This one taking place at 199 pounds. And great athletes for, yes. for 200 pound fighters. Both of these men have a lot of speed and a lot of technique. Yeah, move more like welterweights. Love how Kuchlong just stalks him. Just completely owns his range. Very nice going upstairs there. Some short right hooks. Kuchlong is controlling this contest right now. Beautiful body kick. Straight left hand there. Yeah, continually backing up Jankowski. Jankowski trying to double up on the left kicks. He's asking for a little adjustment there. They're going to do a quick time to go ahead and adjust that shin guard. I've never seen this so much in one event where yeah. the shin guards just are moving around. Part of the game. That, that's still crooked as hell. I, I, that, yeah, that's, that's not more, really fixed. That's more <laughs> crooked than Andre Orlovsky's nose. <laughs> <laughs> that was money. <laughs> Or Mike, Mike Perry's after his last fight. Oh, wow. That looked like he almost injured himself. Yeah, right? Good straight cross again. Oh, little cup check. It's that there. That was a big knee right there. Right above the belt. And fire returned. Man, these guys are going at it now. Nice job by Kuchlong. Really, really it's ending the exchanges, dominating position. He decides where the fight takes place. He's keeping Jankowski on the outside, circling away from him. Just oh, oh my goodness, and right when I say that, beautiful work by Jankowski coming around. Little heel to mouth. Yeah. And that's it for the second round. So interesting round two between Kutch Long and Elias Jankowski. Yeah, if these were scored by rounds, they're not. No. I would go two rounds up, four. The USA. You don't think round one would have went to? I, just, although, just. Although this is it was closer. Yeah. It was closer. Just, just based on the the uh, the control and the uh, overall output of Kuchlong, he was able to land that lead hook and that, that rear kick over and over again. Was yeah. just constantly able to push his Polish opponent all around this ring. Yeah, that's for Those sure. things are not what scored though. We're looking at clean, effective striking that lands. So something that's not blocked, not glancing off of gloves, not glancing off of elbows. And that was the majority of what Kuchlong had put out. So I'm interested to see how this one's being scored. Yeah. And the other thing is they have to be on balance, Mike. So if I'm not on balance, I'm leaning all the way this way and I hit you with a beautiful left hand that stuns you, maybe even knocks you down. 
you know, that's not going to be scored as, as appropriately. So it's a, an interesting rule set compared to some of the other combat sports that people follow. But um, both combatants know the rules. And that's most important. So let's see what happens here. Round three between Kuchlong and Jankowski. It's a nice low kick by Kuchlong. And again. Not many of these Polish fighters are aggressive with their hands. They're more aggressive with their kicks and their knees. Many of the American fighters more seasoned with their boxing, more confident in their punching. I think that's a very solid analysis right there. I think time again we've seen the Polish fighters come out and try to score with their legs. Right. And be very effective in doing it. Absolutely. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen more low kicks from Jankowski. Hasn't gone to the legs that much. Kuchlong looking to get some more power behind these shots now, Mike. He's really looking, I think, to put that left hand on his chin. He wants that power shot. He wants to try and finish him. Let's see. Good job trying to get his hip out there. Notice how Kuchlong moved his hips away so he had enough room to throw the knee up the middle. Jankowski keeping his hips on the inside to try to shut Ooh. down that knee. Kuchlong just... Moved his hips back. Notice that how his hips move away. Mm -hmm. That's going to provide enough room for him to land that knee right up the middle with authority. What a great fight between these two. Mike Finch, Matt Locasio here in Beloit, Wisconsin. World Association of Kickboxing Organization. And we've got some fireworks here in the ring. Kuchlong's corner telling him that Jankowski's worried about the body, so keep going up to the head with those. He's got about 20 seconds left to work here. Kuchlong's done a much better job of catching those kicks here in this round and then countering them. Beautiful body kicks here by Kuchlong. His corner told him to go to the head. He just threw 20 body shots, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. What a fight between these yeah, two. That was fun. Very impressed by Kuchlong. Kuchlong was able to control this fight, move his opponent around he the ring. He commandeered the ring, Mike. He put him wherever he wanted. Exactly. And this fight took place exactly where he chose it to. Great job by Jankowski of moving yeah. around, staying in the fight. I Working mean, it was competitive. Definitely worked his kicks. Definitely landed a lot. Not a ton with, with authority. I would say the harder shots and the quality shots were generally landed by Kuchlong. I'd like to see Kuchlong win this decision, but they're scoring who lands the cleaner strikes and how who did it more. In accumulation, yes. And, and that makes this a very, very competitive bout because Kuchlong did land a lot on the elbows and the knees. And to Kuchlong's credit, Jankowski was trying to throw those low kicks and Kuchlong was checking them all night long. He was really keeping the kicks in check and that's probably the leading reason why we didn't see as many low kicks coming from uh, J uh, Jankowski as we've seen from every other Polish fighter so far. What a fight. For the first time tonight, we have a split decision. Your winner, fighting out of the blue corner, Kutzlong, the Sudanese samurai, Kutzlong.
Our referee is Rocky Troutman. We're scheduled to fight three two-minute rounds. This Rocky is Troutman, our referee for this co-main event here at USA vs. Poland. Leg kick there by Chris the Tree Hugger Hicks. He's taking on Michael Blajevich. The heavyweight fight. Blajevich, Mike, he looks kind of like a scary dude to me. <laughs> <laughs> big, big man. Big and scary, yeah. yeah. Very, very big man. Good, good timing on that low kick there. Yeah, one low kick puts Hicks down. Hicks is a professional MMA fighter with almost 40 fights, Mike. Wow. What, just 29 years old, 37 cage fights. That's pretty wild. Yeah, that's a lot of experience for not being 30 yet. Not a lot of kickboxing experience, though. Mostly MMA. And that's evidence of that right there. He was hanging sure. out to the foot, and you are sure. not allowed to do that. Sure. Yeah, very short, choppy movement. He, he's trying to exit just right and left, continually moving in circles. Hasn't really thrown a punch yet. Well, he's trying to find some space here to let his hands go, and there he does. He's trying to stay out of those corners against the big Bludjevich. Yeah, and Bludjevich just stalking him here, but not letting a lot go either. Really, really taking his time here. Bludjevich to the body, and now up to stairs to the head, and that will send Hicks down here in round one. And Rocky Troutman with the count. Hicks is going to be okay up to his feet by four. And he says he's fine. He looks a little frustrated. That's the right word. He really is getting back down here and just doesn't seem to have an answer. Yeah, every time he's trying to back up and get space, there is Blodjevich right on top of him again. I don't really see the traps that Hicks is setting. Does he have a counter? that he wants to throw. And that's the end of the first round, and Blajevich is really working that left hand to the body, then putting that right hand upstairs on his chin. That's worked a couple of times. Well, great job stalking him for Blajevich, but it did seem that he could increase his output. He's keeping his guard real high. Whatever he throws, he throws with full power. But low output overall from both men. Yeah, Hicks looked like he was trying to wait to counter there, but there was just way too much pressure yeah. and, and output from Blodjevich. Well, he's cowering. He's got his hands up, and he's turning away from his opponent. He's going to want to set a trap. If, if, if he's going to keep his guard up high and he's going to block the first shot, if there's a right hand to, to make uh, the, the, the Polish fighter respect him, that's what he's going to need to create. Right now what he's doing is he's pulling his head away. There's no consequence for for uh, Blodjevich just to let his hands go. See if he can make that adjustment here in round two. But once again, it starts with Blajevic marching down. Hicks and trying to put him right back into the corner. Yeah, Hicks with a very low kick there. It was below the left knee. Ooh, Hicks kind of curling up and now getting back on his horse. Just seems a little unsure of himself in there. There's a good overhand right, but just got caught. Off balance there after that overhand right. Great timing by Michael. Blajevich well, seemed a little surprised that Hicks went down on that. Yeah, Blajevich just didn't put a lot of pepper on it. No. That should be the fight. Yeah, I think that's it. Or is that two? I'd be surprised if that's only the second knockdown. Really? He said, please throw the towel, and he asked for the towel. He doesn't see the towel. Okay. And that's going to be fight, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Rocky will call it off there. So the towel is thrown in by the corner. And uh, I respect that from the coach. He didn't like what he saw. He doesn't want his fighter to get injured. Well, the, the coach actually made eye contact with the fighter in there. And Hicks gave him the nod like, yes, you could throw it. So it was, it was Hicks quitting in this fight. It, it, it didn't seem like he was up to par for the type of, of imposing kickboxing that he was going to have to deal with tonight. When he was shelling up, he liked to turn away, and he wasn't offering any offense back as a threat. Now, he showed a really good overhand right right there, and then his head is in a bad position for that high kick, and you saw the bullish fighter just smile at him after catching him with that shot. And here we go. 
for another knockdown here. Trying to swat the defense down. The hands are up. He's going to dig to the body, too, to the, to the head one, and put him away. Beautiful work. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, while we have a minute, up there in that blue corner just outside the ring are two of the coaches from Team USA, Shane Adams and Rob Zabilski. Rob Zabilski, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to put on a fight card of this magnitude and to secure a facility like this. Give them a nice round of applause for working so hard to bring Team USA around the world to fight and spread the good news of the United States. Magdalena Rock in the red corner, Amanda Ginsky in the blue corner. This is the final bout of the evening, scheduled for three rounds. Our referee is Tim Mazurkiewicz, and here we go. Main event time here at the Eclipse Event Center in Beloit, Wisconsin. Team USA, that's Amanda Ginsky right there, and she is taking on Magdalena Rack from Team Poland. Matt Locasio along with Mike Finch on the call. Main event time here at Waco. USA versus Poland. Very high level female kickboxing action right now. Well, Amanda, before falling in love with kickboxing, two time Chicago Golden Gloves champ, moved over to kickboxing, became five time Waco National Kickboxing champ, recently won silver at the Pan Ams. Well, it's a very in important Bosnia. detail you said there, Matt, is that Amanda Jinsky started as a boxer, and that is really her background. We see her beat girls just with her jab alone. Her boxing is generally very high level, especially when she's in there with pure kickboxers. Yeah, and always with the fantastic footwork as well. Yeah, moves around really well. A very tall, lanky striker. We've had the pleasure of commentating multiple of her fights outside of the World Association of Kickboxing Organization. And now we have the pleasure of calling her in the kickboxing ring where she does her best work. Rack, very well known in Poland. A lot of experience as well. Hundreds of fights between these two girls overall in their career. They both bring that experience in tonight in the main event. Good right hand wow. there from Chinsky. And Chinsky's going Wait to the body. Now. Very nice. She, she did the exact opposite as you usually hear. Usually her start to the body, finish to the head. She started with the head. She got the defense up from Rack. And then she tore that body up with four or five good quality punches. Ten seconds left. Rack goes for the spinning back fist. Run down. Great first round for Amanda Jinsky. No question about it. She was able to control where this fight took place in the ring. Able to land quality shots. Got her jab going a little bit, but there is some frantic energy in the ring, and she wasn't able to establish it as we've seen her do in the past. Let's go ahead and take a look at some replays here. Amanda opening with the jab, then going to the low kicks. You see Rack just much smaller shoulders, tighter guard, different body type than Amanda Jinsky. Amanda long, lanky, using her full reach there, catching Rack at the end of her punches. That's exactly where you get the best kinetic energy, right at the end of the punches. And that's where she was able to land right at the end of the round there. So fundamentally sound. Had a, a year of her life last year in 2018. Went undefeated. 
became the Pan American champion. Next goal is to continue to help build this Wacko Team USA and hopefully one day fight in the Olympics. That would be amazing. She's going low and now going high. Amanda Jinsky doing a great job of mixing up the levels of her strikes. Is she going to hit you in the head, the leg, the body? She keeps her opponents off balance. Rack trying to fix her shin guard, I believe. Yeah, it's bad enough you have to deal with her length. Beautiful right hand by Rack there. You have Landed to deal clean. with her length and you have to deal with the diversity of strikes, and dynamic. Both strikes. girls land in there and Jinsky wow. with a couple quality shots right at the end. Jinsky just has longer combinations than Rack does. Rack likes to throw one, two, or three strikes. You gotta break that. Jinsky's throwing the whole kitchen sink. Rack, unable to get much space off those ropes. Now she's able to move to the center of the ring. Throws a knee that doesn't do much. And now Jinsky's got her up against the corner. Quality right oh. hand by Jinsky. Jinsky landed that right hand flush. She looked for a knee. Missed on that one. Ate a left hook from Man. Rack. These girls are throwing yeah, down she's that. She's letting some power shots go in that last sequence for sure. What a fun fight this is. Whoa. Beautiful push kick by Jinsky. That almost push her out of the ring. USA versus Poland. We are two and two. This fight will decide it. What team will come away victorious? Great job just leaning back there for Jinsky. Very high level boxing. You notice how she did that. Most people would have to retreat with their feet. All Jinsky did was she made a read. She understood that she could be out of range with a slight lean. Decided not to counter, but still you could see the higher level defense with Jinsky. She's able to just get outside of the strikes. What's the difference if a punch misses you by a centimeter or by a mile? There is no difference. It didn't hit you. That's what Jinsky is great at. She's great at making you just miss. Ate a good right hand there. Coming forward, just getting aggressive. See how she's just outside of that left hook. Comes back, bang, bang. Left hook, right hand, and a kick. Very clean work. And a lot of her opponents, after dealing with her length, find themselves just a bit outside of being able to be in that sweet spot to get her at the end of their fist. And then they leave themselves exposed. If you believe you're going to hit somebody and you sell out on a shot, if you miss, you're going to be open. To yeah. All right, round three, Jinsky and Rack. Good Crowd side definitely kick. getting louder each round. Good right hand there by Rack. Yeah. Rack has been finding that right hand. She might be the best boxer from Team Poland I've seen. She's trying to get, Rack is trying to get her hands off, but Gitschke's just pouncing on her, and Rack ends up clinching in order to get the break and try to get that space, but it's just going to be Groundhog Day all over again, Mike. I mean, she's just going to continually march her down and smother her. Well, I like the activity from Rack this round. She's starting to lead the dance there, but Amanda Ginsky wow. smacking her with some good shots. Whoop. Nice job with the body shots when she's coming in, too. She's yes. scoring points there. Those were three hooks to the ribs that she landed. Everybody saw the jab, but as she came in, boom, 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 she's hitting that body, and those are racking up. She understands the type of competition she's in, that she has to create points here. And that hook on the break, the referee did not like. Polish fans singing now, trying to get Rack going. Good push kick. seconds left. Push kick lands on the mark for Jinski. Oh. Great job with a one-two down the pipe. She got Rack off balance. Two knuckle sandwiches flying down the pipe. <laughs> Rack tried some spinning stuff, almost ended up on our table. <laughs> Fell out of the ring. Good one-two. Another one-two for Jinsky. 20 left now for Jinsky to put an exclamation point on it. Rack just trying to figure out how to deal with this problem. 
She's just too skilled, too fundamentally sound, and too long, and wants it too badly. Amanda Jinsky. What a Should fight. Another, another win under her belt tonight, man. Outstanding performance by Amanda Jinsky. That's for sure, and she did it with a lot more pressure than I'm used to seeing her fight with. She closed that distance a lot in this fight. I don't know if she needed to. She usually has great long strikes, a snapping jab, great boxing, but what she did tonight was put a lot of pressure on the Polish fighter, and she definitely did a lot of quality work with that pressure. Every time she got in tight, she was landing to the body, whether it be punches, knees, and she was staying active. Look at that great push kick, one, two down the pipe. That small highlight there is just a summary of what Jinsky was able to do tonight. Beautiful quality work, moving her Polish opponent around the ring and dominating the positioning. The fight took place where Amanda Jinsky wanted it to, and that's another reason why she was able to land as many strikes as she did. What a fight, Matt. Oh. Way to cap off the evening, no doubt about it. We'll send it upstairs. It looks like they had the decision. Will it be Jinsky or will it be Poland's Magdalena Rack? All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we leave here tonight, how about another big round of applause for these athletes, Team Poland and Team USA? We have a unanimous decision. Your winner, fighting out of the blue corner, Amanda Gensky. Gensky. On behalf of everybody at Rocco and Team USA, welcome our friends from Poland. Have a great weekend. And to all of you veterans, thank you for your service. Mike Finch, Pat Lucasio, uh, just a fantastic night here at the Prince Event Center in Benoit, Waco, USA against Poland. And uh, let's just start with the main event. Amanda sure. Jinsky, uh, so many accolades for her, and she comes out tonight and shows exactly why she deserves all those accolades. Absolutely. What a, a fantastic, experienced fighter. She deserved to be in the main event tonight. She was able to put combinations together tonight on her opponent. Magda Rack really came to fight, too. Yep. I love the matchup between these two. Number two ranked in the world is Jinsky, and that comes with a lot of competition experience. She's been in there with all the best, and we see why. Her boxing is, is second to none in, in female kickboxing because she started as a boxer, and you could see that every single time she's squaring up with these girls. She's in tight. She's going to the body. She's on the outside. She's letting punches slip by her. Very, very solid performance tonight by Amanda Jinsky, and she she earns the unanimous decision victory. Yeah. It was a great performance. I'm trying not to burst out laughing as some Polish fans. I know they're, they're, they're dancing. And they're dancing. So <laughs> forgive me for being just slightly. Uh, I had to look. Uh, how about Romeo Orozco? Wow. Took his first loss just a while ago and came back and said, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to keep on coming. I'm right. going to keep on fighting. This is not going to stop me. Right. Um, and we saw him in mixed martial arts a lot. He yeah. landed like five takedowns tonight. I don't know where <laughs> those came from, but a wonderful performance by him. He used a lot of his energy tonight, yes. so you could see that he really let it go as to where his opponent, I feel like, could fight another three rounds, no problem. His opponent had great low kicks all night, but that's about it yeah. as to where you saw the uh, the karate kid really open up, and Orozco was able to really 
empty the gas tank and show us all the strikes that he had in his arsenal, and those were varied. They, he would spin, he would go low, he would go high. He earned his decision victory by just laying on the gas pedal more than his opponent tonight. Oh, win number eight for Romeo, and um, back back to start probably another really long winning streak. At least he hopes so. Sure. Um, Kuchlong, Kuchlong, our only split decision of the night. That was a very interesting fight. I and, love that uh, fight. Yeah, I mean, I, he just proved to be uh, too much for Elias Jankowski. I was surprised that it was a split decision, though. Sure, I thought Kuchlong controlled the fight. I thought he especially controlled where the fight took place. You can say that about a lot of these American fighters tonight. A lot of these uh, USA versus Poland matchups, the, the fighter from the USA would push the Polish fighter around the ring. Again, we're scoring based on effective strikes, though. So it's not about ring control or any other criteria. And uh, the Polish fighters knew that. He stayed active and made it a close fight. I think that's why it ended up being a split decision. If you were to take that exact fight and put it into maybe glory, kickboxing or another kickboxing organization I think you'd see an obvious decision for Kuchlong. Kuchlong was able to keep it at his range and was able to land effective strikes every round. International card but we did have one local fight on it on the undercard it was Northern Illinois Combat Club Shad Walters taking on Team No Joke which is right around the corner in Loves Park. Right. Uh, Javier Garcia that fight was stopped in the third round. Doctor stoppage with some leakage of blood we thought maybe a little too soon but right. nevertheless Shad Walters showed that He's got some pretty good hands, Mike. Absolutely. He was really opening up well. I thought that was one of the highest level fights we saw tonight. I really loved the way Walters was being dynamic, but his opponent, Garcia, very, very high guard, yeah. stayed in that fight the whole time. Good low kicker as well. And I thought that, you know, it maybe was stopped a little bit early. It's 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 a, a thing in amateur MMA where you, you don't want anybody to take unnecessary damage because they're just learning. And excuse me, uh, in amateur uh, combat sports in general, they're, they're just learning. They're just getting their feet wet. What I saw tonight from those two, they were fighting like they were professionals. It was very high level. Absolutely look out for Garcia um, and Walters. They're both going to be coming up and climbing the mountain. Uh, another one that I really enjoyed tonight was uh, Amanda Zabilski from Team USA against uh, Andrea Lease. Yeah. And uh, that really seemed like, you know, I was surprised that uh, Andrea was 6-5, six and five, now 6-6. Six and six. Uh, looked very smooth out there, very confident, very poised. Seemed like she had a game plan and she knew what she wanted to do and knew how to, to uh, enact that. But man, Amanda Zabilski at every turn was just firing off combinations left yeah. and right yeah. and really kept her at bay. Yeah, si sim similar story as to where one fighter has all the output and they're really laying on the gas pedal and the other fighter isn't. And um, I, don't, I don't know who's more skilled between the two, but I know that absolutely uh, Team USA all night laying on the gas pedal and not fighting like you're in a marathon, fighting more so like she's in a sprint. She was she had uh, Amanda Jinsky in her corner. Amanda Jinsky just kept gassing her up. She just kept going out there and doing her thing. I do think that her opponent didn't really spend much energy, but you have to be able to manage your energy yeah. in, a, in a way that it's effective. And that's what she did better. And I felt like overall Team USA did better tonight was they would, uh, would explode when they needed to, move when they needed to, as to where their opponents were almost so lax that it was more of a sparring feel. And that's why they ended up uh, being down one fight at the end of the night. Yeah, it's a fine line. It's two minute rounds, only right. three two minute rounds. Right. So you got to get after it a little bit. Uh, uh, but at the same time, you know, these are still hard two minute rounds and, yes. and guys guys were getting tired. Um Especially the guys that took some low shots, they got a little bit more tired, a little bit more quickly. We saw quickly, some, some nasty low shots tonight. Luckily, yeah, uh, luckily we're making do. these cups strong, so we you gotta gotta do. go diamond MMA cup. There's a little plug. They they should send me some money for that. That's right. Well, listen, go to wacousa.org and sign up for your free membership. Uh, there's a ton of information on that side. You can also follow uh, Waco. Uh, on Facebook at Waco Team USA Kickboxing. I say go do those two things and you'll be all cut up on all the events that are going on. Um, I just really wanted to wrap it up by saying thanks to Rob Zbilski and Waco Team USA for the hospitality, for putting on such an outstanding event. Um, this is a guy that doesn't get the credit he deserves. He's done just amazing work for a very long time, trying to get kickboxing on the map, trying to get kickboxing um, you know, recognized by the IOC and have an American kickboxing team recognized for the Olympics. So these are all small steps towards that, and we hope to be putting on more of these. 
where it'll be Team USA versus another uh, international team. I thought it was a blast. Yeah, how and fun was that? Quite this? an experience if you're a 20, 22 year old fighter from Poland. Sure. I get to go to America and fight and yeah. test myself against, you know, the best from that country. So I think it's just a fantastic event. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike, good to see you. Good to work with you, brother. As always, brother, and, come uh, check us out. You guys could check out me and Matt Locasio, Mike Finch MMA. Matt, you want to plug your channel? Yeah, well, ChicagosMMA.com and uh, hit me up on Twitter at Matt underscore Locasio. You can check out KJ and Rob. They're always putting Kicking stuff it out. With KJ. That's right, that's right. That's the award winner. So thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you again soon. For Mike Finch, I'm Matt Locasio. You have a great evening.